What's going on everybody? Joe Munoz, OneStepPrep.com. Juan and Joe, the J&J team, your friends in training program success. Today, I wanna to talk to you guys about landing with a 50 knot crosswind. Now you're probably thinking, Joe, I can't even land with 50 knots of crosswind, bro. That's against my company policy. Look, of course it is. I know that, I know you know that, but what I'm gonna show you here today is simply a technique that I know Throw in all the regulations and the, and the maximum demonstrated crosswind components in your company. So look, throw all that aside. I know with this technique that I'm gonna show you right now, if you employ this, you could literally go into a simulator. I'm just, okay, in a simulator, right? Go into a sim with a 50 knot crosswind and you can land the jet comfortably. Now, the technique I'm gonna show you here, you can employ in your real life flying to comfortably, comfortably fly your approach in a strong crosswind condition, right? So stick with me here and we're gonna go through it right now. understand for this explanation is I'm going to give us a left crosswind and we're going to land on a due north runway, right? So let's say we're landing on runway 36 right, okay, right? Straight north, how convenient. We're going to have a left crosswind coming and the wind I told you, how much wind did I tell you was going to do this? With 50 knots, right? So we're going to do this crosswind with 50 knots. Now look, how do I know this will work? Joe, 50 knots, you sound so confident. How do you know? I've done it. In a simulator, I tried this technique, I'm telling you. And in real life, I've also done it as well, of course, not with 50 knots, but believe me when I tell you folks, employ this technique, it's a lot more comfortable for you on the approach. So check this out. Let's say we're on this approach, right? We're going in a 3-6 left or right, whatever. It's a 3-6 uh, runway, right? And we have a left crosswind blowing at 50 knots, okay? 50 knots. Now, there's one of two things you can do with this, okay? You can do either what we call crabbing, okay, you can crab or you can go cross controlled, right? Now, I'm gonna put them on over here to the side. If you crab on this approach, okay, also known as bracketing, AKA bracketing, by the way, maybe you've heard that term, okay? Uh, this is far more comfortable and it's my preferred method. The other uh, way that you could do this is what we call uh, cross controlled, right? Cross controlled. Now look, what I'm gonna show you here right now, it's a combination of both of them together. It's actually both together. We're gonna to first initially crab and later go cross controlled. And we're gonna do it very strategically with another little golden nugget that I'm about to drop on you right now. Stay with me here. Okay, so we can crab or we can cross control. Now look, generally what I tell pilots in the sim is I say, look, I'm gonna give you a crosswind landing, a reposition and back. I'm gonna give you a crosswind landing, I'm gonna give you 50 knots and good luck, we're all counting on you. Do it as best as you can. I give them zero guidance. I wanna see initially what they do. Now, usually what they do, let me tell you what most pilots do. They actually go for number two from very far out on final, okay? Now, let me show you or tell you, right, why this is not preferred in my uh, opinion here. Okay, when you go cross-controlled, you're in a situation where in this particular case, we're landing 3-6, 50 knots, right? So the winds are 270 at 50 knots, blowing this direction. What's going to happen next is that you're gonna go right rudder, you with me? Left aileron, right rudder, left aileron, and you end up kind of flying a little cross control like this, right? So you kind of like sagging down the approach sideways. Now it's not comfortable for you, not comfortable for your passengers. So there's a better means of doing it, folks. It's called crabbing or bracketing, and then later on going cross controlled. Now let me show you how you can do this in an effective manner that's extremely, extremely comfortable for you. What you're gonna to wanna to do is utilize differential thrust. What? Oh, differential thrust, folks. Believe it or not, okay, believe it or not, believe me when I tell you this, this, this will help you 100% in being, in flying a comfortable approach down to the uh, uh, numbers, touchdown zone, smooth, everything, the whole thing's perfect. I'm telling you, try this. So now watch, what you're gonna wanna do, okay, to crab this with differential thrust, I think we got this part now. Let's say, let's say, hypothetically, okay, these are my thrust levers down here. Now. The question is, okay, I'm gonna draw them like this, number two thrust lever is just ahead of the number one, right? Now the deal is, which direction does the aircraft wanna turn naturally? Let me give you an example. Let's say you're right here on this approach, okay? You are lined up perfectly, you take the autopilot off, 
you release all rudder pressure, all aileron input, and you just let go of everything. What would the aircraft want to do? What would the aircraft want to do? Okay, now look, the answer is it's going to want to weather vane into the wind, right? So because we got this wind, 50 knots, coming off our left side, right? The nose is going to want to go this direction. Look, if you don't believe me with this, try it. Believe me. Try this in the simulator, I promise you. Put yourself on, on final, have your instructor put you, uh, maybe, I don't know, five mile final is perfect, and then disconnect everything, autopilot, auto throttle, and just let go. And what you'll find is the airplane will instantly go this way, it, it'll weather vane into the wind. The same thing is true when you touch down on the runway, and just let go of everything, release the rudder, uh, rudder pressure, any pressure you have in there, just release all input, and see what the aircraft does. It's gonna wanna track off the runway. Now, same thing on a takeoff roll, it's gonna wanna go into the wind. The aircraft always wants to weather vane into the wind, period. Believe me when I tell you this, try it out in a sim. Okay, so look, here's what I'm gonna do. Instead of fighting the aircraft, right? The aircraft is like, hey, I wanna go left. I'm like, okay, cool. In fact, I'm gonna help you go left. No, I'm not gonna fight. I'm not gonna fight the airplane. I'm actually gonna work. I'm gonna work with the aircraft, with the aircraft, by bringing up the number two engine. So I'm gonna apply additional thrust over here, and I'm gonna bring back, okay, or at least have a lesser thrust setting on the number one engine. Now, this technique works great, assuming the auto throttle or the auto thrust is off, of course, because you need manual control of your thrust. Now, I know some of you are probably thinking, Chuck, in gusty condition like that, I don't wanna disconnect the auto thrust. That's the last thing I wanna do. And I completely, I completely understand that. I'm with you, right? But I will tell you this, it's good for you to practice your hand flying stick and rudder ability, right? This is one thing when you're out there on the line, look, don't get caught up in relying on the automation all the time. Take the autopilot off, take the auto thrust off, okay? Take the autopilot and the auto throttle off for all of our 737 drivers out there, right? Do not get used to automation all the time, right? Keep your stick and rudder skills sharp. Ladies and gentlemen, brother, sister, keep them sharp, man, come on. All right, now look. What we're doing here, the auto throttle, of course, the auto thrust is off because we're using differential thrust, okay? We're not gonna be hanging down with the auto throttles trying to engage them and we're doing our own deal here. Okay, so we got them disconnected and now I'm advancing number two slightly, I'm bringing back number one and what we have is that because the weather vane effect is turning the aircraft into the wind, I'm actually saying, okay, aircraft, great. If you wanna go into the wind, sure. In fact, I'm gonna help you. And I do a little differential thrust, right? And now what this does is it allows me to fly crabbed Okay, down the runway center line, still tracking down the runway center line, okay? And I'm not in a, in a position where we're cross control and we're kind of sideways. So I don't want my passengers hanging sideways, right? And you shouldn't either, okay? It's all about comfort, okay? We want a smooth ride, right? So we get them all nice and smooth. We're coming in down the center line. Now here's the next point. Here's the next tip. If you're taking notes, ladies and gentlemen, sharpen your pencil for this one right now if you're taking notes, okay? Because I see a lot of pilots do not touch down on the center line. Okay, one of the things, particularly in these, in, these, in these strong crosswind landings, we're looking for, in every landing, but typically here for sure, right? We're looking for center line, touchdown zone, smooth landing in that priority. Center line, touchdown zone, smooth landing if you can get it. Notice it's the last one. That's the order priority right there. So look, for you to get on the center line here, let me show you what happens. Okay, here's my extended center line all the way down. Well, look, if the aircraft is being crabbed, Okay, let me draw a nice, let me draw a nice, come on, let me draw a nice little picture here, right? So if the aircraft is being crabbed like this, we're tracking perfectly, our ground track is perfect. By the way, notice what's going on here, my heading, if this is 360 right here, my heading may very well be 330. So my heading could be 330, but my actual ground track could be 360. So the nose is pointing 330, but I'm tracking 360. I hope this makes sense to you. For those of you that maybe you're um, lower time, if you're watching this and this concept right here where you have a heading and a track doesn't make sense, send me an email, joe.m at onestepprep.com. I'll get right back to you. Say, Joe, it doesn't make no sense, brother. Come on. All right, I'll hit it from a different angle. We'll make it work for you. All right, so look, tracking all the way down. With this heading, heading of 330, my crosswind is not direct crosswind, you agree? In fact, really what I have now is almost a crosswind with some quartering headwind component here. You see where we're getting with this? You have a little bit of a headwind component. Now the issue is that once we get down low, okay, we're gonna go cross controlled, okay? So let me get to that part. As we come on down the approach, we're gonna go into a cross controlled situation where we will end up applying, in this case, right rudder, right rudder, right? 
to, a, to align ourselves with the center line, and we're going to give a little bit of left aileron, okay, a little bit. We don't want to hit the engine nacelle, okay, which is possible. Engines are fairly low to the ground, nor do we want to hit the wingtip. So it's a little bit of aileron input only and that rudder simultaneously. Now, as you get down to hangar height, okay, about 50 feet, and you're thinking of hangar height. What is hangar height, Joe? Are you making up terms here? Okay, hangar height is the height of a hangar, okay? So as I get down to about this 50 foot mark or so, I begin considering maybe now I need to apply that right rudder in this case, a little bit of left aileron. And let me tell you what happens here though when we go cross control, because this is what's happening, right? You're going from a crab situation to a cross controlled situation and the whole reason, look, the entire reason you're going cross controlled is because the 7.3 and the 320 are not certified for side loads on the main landing gear. Okay, some aircraft are, for example, right, 747. You can land sideways. I'm sure if you go look up any video, 747 crosswind landing, and you will find that there's actually a lot of videos where the aircraft will land sideways. Why? Main gear certified for side loads. Okay, but on these jets here, 73320, not certified for that. So you don't want to be landing sideways because you don't want to collapse your gear, right? So look, stick with me here, cross control. And what we do is when I cross control, when I cross control, this quartering headwind now becomes a direct crosswind. You with me? Because now my aircraft looks like this. And look, if 50 knots of crosswind are blowing, I got a straight direct crosswind. Now watch what happens here. Now my heading is 360, but as a result of that crosswind, my track may actually be 030, which means everything is going beautiful and you're tracking the center line perfectly until you go cross controlled at your hanger height, and now you end up blown off the center line because of that strong left crosswind. Make sense? So now, how do we remedy this? Okay, what's the solution, Joe? Always a solution here. You know, one step prep.com, we're full of solutions here. Okay, so what you're gonna wanna do is track ever so slightly upwind of the center line. I'm talking ever so slightly, folks. Okay, all I'm gonna do is basically bring the aircraft, and if you're flying with me in a sim or in real life, you'll probably never even notice what I'm doing, right? What I'm doing is I am intentionally tracking ever so slightly right there, upwind, upwind of the uh, center line. Now, why am I tracking upwind? Because it's exactly the discussion we just had, right? As soon as I go that direction, I'm waiting for that wind, which is now a direct crosswind component, to blow me right on top of the center line. Makes sense? I'm getting blown right on top of the center line. And remember the three things we're looking for for a great landing here in the order of priority, center line, touchdown zone, followed by smooth landing. I'm focusing on the first two. If I can nail the third one, excellent. If not, great, okay? If not, no issue. Look, don't float. Do not float and float and float forever on your landings, folks, because here's the reality of it. The landing will be very smooth until you go off the end of the runway. And then it's not smooth anymore, you with me? So you gotta make sure that you prioritize center line, touchdown zone, and then smooth landing. That's the last one, okay? If we can get it, we can, and if not, we don't. But make sure we keep it on the runway and the touchdown zone, that's the main thing. Now look, I'm on the ground now, and you're probably thinking, okay, well now that I'm on the ground, does the weather veining effect that we talked about earlier, does it go away? And of course it doesn't, just as we mentioned. So the deal now is that you're actually going to want to utilize the downwind reverser first. Wow, okay, let me explain this, okay? So, in fact, let's clean this up a little bit, because you know at one step prep here, we like to keep things crispy clean. All right, so here we go. If I'm on this center line, I'm perfect, what a landing, come on, man. All right. <clears throat> Not drawn to scale. Obviously, I got my engines hanging off the side of the runway here. Let me redo that. There we go. Something like that. You with me? All right, cool. Good enough. So now, check it out. Here's the deal. Wind's still blowing. Nose wants to come off to the left side. I'm still high speed touchdown, right? I'm rolling out now, okay? And what I'm going to want to do is I need to help stop this. I need to remedy a solution. I need a solution here so that I can keep that directional control with my nose on the center line. You with me? Now, the way I'm going to do that now is I'm going to actually pop this reverser and generate a pulling force on the downwind side first so that I can actually <whistles> help myself aligning the aircraft, directional control. So I pop the downwind reverser first and then I'm going to go for the upwind reverser and that'll help me with my directional control. 
Okay. Now you'll see this a lot with DC-9 pilots, Gulfstream pilots, MD-80 pilots. Okay, the old school pilots out there. I know you all know this technique. I know you do because I always see you guys utilizing it. And you should because it works, right? I'm with you. I agree with that. So here's the whole thing, folks. Be sure, okay, that you give this a shot. Maybe not in real life the first time. Try it in a simulator. But first try your method. I want you to try your cross control. They're using the same thrust values on both engines. Look, whatever you're used to doing, Try that first and then try this method of utilizing differential thrust with a little bit of crab and cross control and the last 50 feet or hangar height and then utilizing even differential reverse thrust to maintain directional control on a runway. This will take practice, okay? It's not gonna be maybe one, two, three landings in a sim. It might be something that requires quite a bit of repetition depending on your background, but I will tell you this. If you have the time and you have the ability to practice this in a sim, even if it's a desktop sim, when you give this a try, send me an email to joe.m at onestepprep.com. I want to hear your feedback. I want to hear how this went for you. And I look forward to reading your emails very soon.